Hello guys and welcome to Train Sim TV. And in today's video we are going to be having a look at the new class 20 for Train Sim World. I've had a little play of this already. Um, it's not my first look. We have done it on the stream as well prior to this video going up. But we're going to give you another video and an insight on what we think of the loco that has just been released um, as of the 18th of the 6th 2020. Um, we'll give all your thoughts and we'll just come and have a look at everything that's included. Um, so sit back enjoy and we will take you for a drive along the Tees Valley line with the class 20. You join me now just at Eagles Cliff or our class 20 locomotive um, we have a pair of 20s and I'm gonna get rid of that um, we have a pair of 20s and um, a rake of PJ um, limestone hoppers that come with the pack we're going to take this um, timetabled service between Eaglescliff and Tees Yard and then a little bit of um, uncoupling and running the loco onto the shed. Uh, I have done this timetable run already so I know what to expect. Um, the scenario I've done already will be coming as a, a video a little bit down the line. I just haven't had the chance to redo the scenario again uh, a second time this evening sadly as time was pressing on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you for a small drive, have a listen, have a play, show you all the features that I've found and what my thoughts are. So I'm going to bring the sound in so you can hear straight away what's going on. So you should be able to hear the 20 now. Now my first thoughts on the sounds are they're really good. Um, one thing that's a little bit off to me is when you hear the low con idle, it does sound a little bit like a, a bit of a thumpish sort of sound, uh, like a class 205 if you will. It seems to have a bit of a deep fug going to it. But once it gets going, it really does sound fantastic. So, uh, let's get ourselves moving up to the loco itself. Now what we'll do is we're going to focus on the front first of all. So, we have disc um, head code stuff on here. So first thing you can do you can open up the discs and then again and then you can bring it back down and we'll close that one off and same again here and you get the gist with that one so you can do that so that's nice uh, to have and the second thing which I think is fantastic is that you can actually put yourself a tail on pump which is a really nice little feature as well and you can have that on automatically or you can have it on um, like that one says on all the time, this one uh, you can have it as automatic, so whenever you are running in um, at the other end it will pop up, or you can just make it so it's off. So, moving down on the loco, I'm going to get rid of that because it's going to keep popping up, just ignore that. So, I've noticed that there's, I think they've done a new way of um, sort of trying to do the weathering uh, on here now. It, a little bit close up, it's a little bit um, pixelated, but it looks really good when you're at a distance. I like the I like the the wear and tear of it, like on the um, the logos and um, and the data panels as well. It's like a little bit scratched off them, which is nice. So it's not a clean loco. It's used. It's got weathering, which is really nice. The weathering around the bogies as well is really nice, and the detail as well is really good. Um, the springs are not 3D by the looks of it. They look like 2D, sort of like a fake 3D, if you will. But they look good at a distance. Really nice detail on there as well, the glass and the, uh, the handle behind. Fuel gauge there. Uh, as always, you can obviously unfuel and refuel your loco. I don't think they'll let us do that on this. But you can. Unless I'm doing it on the wrong one, I'm going, oh I'm doing it on the wrong one. <laughs> That's on the, um, the lubricant. So yeah, of course you can undo that. And then put the cap back on. You can also isolate the batteries on the other engine. We'll go through that in a minute. Can you, yep you can. You can stand on there as well which is really cool. Oh wow. Wow. You can actually walk along the side of the loco. I didn't see this on the stream. That's fantastic. That's cool. Mega. That's going to go off again. So, that's another thing. We know about that. Obviously, that's the bonnet end. The detail's really nice. 
jump back off there. There was a little bit of hoo-ha about the bogeys, but um, since the release, I've heard a few people saying that they look right. Um, there was talk of them possibly looking a bit too small, but um, I mean, I'm no expert on bogeys really, um, but apparently they, they do look good. I think the way of when DTG do their um, promo screenshots, make things look a little bit blown out and not quite how they would look in the actual game. Um, I, I'm wondering if it's some of the effects that they use on their um, advertisement imagery, imagery what they put on Steam. But it looks really good. It look it, it did look a little bit off. Um, on the promo pictures. Um, also, you can open the panel door for the battery, so you can isolate other, other loco if you wish, just by pulling that isolator switch down. And there's also the detail is that you can see the two locks opening one at a time. That's cool. So, not both open together, they've actually taken the time to put the script in where one goes and, and the other one. That's nice to see. Um, we're not going to go into the cab yet, we'll do the cab at the front. So I'm just going to take you for a look around the um, the PGA limestone hopper. Now I do believe that you can climb onto these, I think. Or can you not? Do the handbrake. You can see the handle there going from off to on on the left hand side as well. Again, the detailing on the wagons, the uh, detail in the weathering as well is really nice. Don't think you can actually jump on top of these. Some wagons do, they do allow you to actually climb up, but I don't think this one does. Now the extra feature here is that you can now climb underneath the wagon. So I'm just going to show you this one quickly. Press E. How cool is that? That's amazing. You can also put your tail lamps on there as well. I'm not going to uncouple any of this because we don't need to do that at the moment. But that is a really cool little feature again. And you can see underneath there the actual detail of the wagon. Be put in there. So yeah, excellent stuff. It's all getting thumbs up though. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my run on um, the stream. So we'll go and get into our loco and uh, get ourselves set up and just show you the bits and pieces that are featured inside the cab. Now we're going to the door. Open up. Oh, good sound on the doors. Now my amazement was this, this animation of getting onto the actual um, cab. Rather than just like flying up, it actually goes through the, each step. Um, this also has sounds on the door shutting compared to when we last did, um, we did the Rivet Games DBBR204 I think it was, and the, there was no sounds when the door shut. That does clunk. So, what do we have in our cab? We are going to set up our instrument lights first. We don't actually have the headlamps on already, so we'll put the instrument lights on. We'll uh, put them up full. We're going to start from left to right. So, we have the driver's seat, so you can adjust the height. The animation into the driver's seat as well is very nice. It's a bit like the 31, where it goes in that way. You can open the windows, and they have sound as well as you open them. Uh, we've got all the lights up there so you can do all the different headlight and head codes and stuff. We have a cab light, which is nice, it sort of like goes on and off, it doesn't just go on off, it has a, a fade to it. A bit like the AP86 fade as well actually, to be fair, it's quite cool. Nice. So moving from the left to right we have our local brake. We have our loco brake which is in shutdown at the minute we will put that just there for now because we haven't actually got our cab set up we'll go over there in a minute wiper you can manually do the wiper if you wish or you can set it up into run and then slower and then even slower and then stop we have I'll do the horn Not overly keen on that horn, but you have a different horn on the other side, so we'll go over that in a minute and do that one. Uh, we've got a few useless buttons, we've got cab eaters. They do make sounds, actually. So I'm not going to say they're actually fully useless, but they do actually make some sound. AWS. 
which is standard. Um, we have our reverser and throttle. We'll go over them in a minute because we need to put the key in first. We've got DSD pedal. We have uh, we have the wipers obviously there, independent. Hot plate. This is another pointless feature, but I think it's absolutely fantastic. Turn it on. It glows. It's getting hotter. And I didn't know this until uh, we did the stream, but if you actually click, it tells you off. <laughs> Warning, surface may be hot. Which I think is absolutely pointless, but fantastic. It's nice. And then when you go and turn it off, it doesn't just go instantly off. It, it takes a moment to sort of, obviously it's cooling itself down. The longer it's on, I think it takes a lot longer to cool down. But if we watch it, you can now see that the, the glow is fading down. Really cool. We have cut out control switches. <clears throat> we have a handbrake. We have an emergency brake valve shut. Now, going to the other side, I'm going to put the key in. The key is on this end of the cab. I'm going to put the AWS isolation onto unisolated, and then I'm going to put the lever on. There we go, just cancel that. Now I'm just going to show you the horn on the other end of the cab. Hang on. There we go. We also have a brake selector, so air for passengers, air brake for goods, vacuum for goods, vac for passenger. I'm going to put the air brake on the goods there. You can also open the fuse compartment. Um, you can put the control circuit fuses in and exhaust the isolation switch as well. So some good features with this. Again with the wiper you can do them on there. Now I do believe there is different cam views. There we go, so you can actually have a, a view looking out the window there. There's all sorts of different ones in here. That cover everything. Yeah, we're looking very good. So the last thing is the fire alarm test. I think we virtually have covered all bases on this, which now takes us to the drive and oh also there's one more thing on. If you sit in the seat, if I get it right, it's a little bit clunky. There we go. We we can turn ourselves around. Uh, there's also a DSD holdover. So we have our key in. We can put ourselves into forward, release our brakes, so get them released before we get moving. releasing because we've got quite a long rake of uh, wagons there we go so we are rolling so it clunks into on so it actually locks in and you also hear the, the hiss as well when you take off the throttle. When you have them in pairs, they sound like they are kind of tripping themselves up on the, uh, the when they're powering up. But they do sound good though once they get going.
the clag look good as well. Now there's a little bit of a niggle with the clag where it does drop the FPS down when it, it gets going. So if I just power off a second. It's currently 51 FPS. To get it going. doing it it's dropped it drops about 10 fps there we go but it does climb back up again it does sort itself out <clears throat> i mean it's no issue to myself um on my setup but it could be an issue for certain players on certain systems to get a decent view here for the all important thumbnail There we go. So, it sounds good, it feels good, and it drives well. It's a really nice environment, and inside the cab as well, the textures are really nice. Really worn, really grubby. And it gives you that feel and sense that it's been really worked over its life. The wagons as well sound really good. So it's not a long run, as I say, it's just a, a short run to give you guys a look at what's uh, on offer with the pack. For £11.99, you can hear the hiss there as well. It deafened me the first time I heard it. And the game was so loud. It's a lot louder than the Train Sim 2020 um, one from AP. But apparently uh, I was talking to someone I know in the stream and he said it's actually more louder, so this is actually more realistic. That speed actually showed up on the uh, top. We are speeding. <laughs> We're at Bowesfield Junction. So as I was saying, yeah, £11.99, you get three scenarios, you get uh, a selection of um, timetable runs, which is this has been one of them. There's a few different ones, I think they feature all sorts of bits and pieces like shunter work, um, other bits and pieces between different um, industries on this section of the route. Um, I don't think anything goes further than Eagles Cliff though, sadly. Um, it would have been nice to see stuff go towards Darlington, but then again, stuff like this might not have ever gone that way, so I can see obviously why that might not have happened. But it is nice to um, have an extra loco for this route. Um, the scenario I did on the stream was really good. Um, it was called Heavy Hall or something like Heavy Steel or something like that. Or Steel. Something Steel or whatever. Maybe Rail for it, actually. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was really good. We have got the shunt signal, by the way. Um, yeah, really good scenario. Um, I look forward to doing the other two um, over the coming weeks and months or whenever I can fit it in. Um, we will do one for a video at some point. So 
we're going to just releasing the brakes at the minute. Obviously, got such a, a long rake, it will uh, take a bit longer to release them brakes. We are now level three with the class twenty. Hooray! As you can see, I've been driving it a bit today. It will go a little bit laggy, unfortunately, while we go into Tees Yard, as we know it's a busy area and it, it just lags. There's no way I put a coat in it, it just lags. Just look out the window it doesn't like. Just because there's so much going on over here. So we don't need to do anything, uh, anything particular with the sidings. Everything's set for us currently. So this is the Redmire to Tees Yard working. Redmire being situated at the end of what is now known as the Wensleydale Railway, um, which is the heritage route, which branches off at North Hallerton. As you can see, we have a good selection of wagons now for this route. We have the PGAs. We have the steel thingies, whatever they are, is it BBAs, I think? We've got the HEAs, and we have the uh, PCA tankers as well. So it's getting very well populated in terms of uh, freight. We've got the 37, we've got the 31, the 101, and the 20. So we have four locos, including what well, with the unit on this route now. So there is a, a nice selection. Um, the only sad thing is, of course, Trainsing World 1 is obviously being made redundant, if you will, um, for the new Trainsing World 2. So this is the last product for Trainsing World 1. And I hope that they keep up to the standards um, moving forward into Trainsing World 2, because this is fantastic. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to say it's not, because it, it really is good. There's only a couple of niggles, um, which I've pointed out there might be a couple of more bits and pieces that I don't know about but from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've found today um, it's a really good release to be honest so and it comes with some nice new nifty little features as well that's annoying that's happened on other products so I think that's just a Trainsing World issue which it would be nice to see fixed moving forward into Trainsing World 2 just going to say Right, so we need to get back on to our loco, so back up we go. Back into our seat, and we're going to pull forward. Just releasing them brakes. So we stop at the location of Tees Yard Wagon Repair Shunt Spur, which is just 415 yards to our front direct window there.
The cap sway is good on this as well, I've noticed. We have the hoses that... Um, I can get to my actual front loco, come on. There we go. We have the hoses that sway as well on curves, I've noticed that. It's not going to do it much at the minute because we're not really bending. You can sort of see it. There we go. If I do that, you should be able to see them. And we are stopping just up ahead. Brake squeal's good as well, I must say. Right, so we need to shut down our brakes. I can, if you'll let me. There we go, put the pin up, that always helps. I'm going to shut this cab down. Uh, we will take the bottom lights off. Our reverser into off. Uh, we'll also turn our instrument lighting off. Take the key out. And then just un well, isolate, shall I say, that lot. Alright, so. For the purpose of this video, what we're going to do is rather than put the tail lights on, I'm going to close these down. I'm going to pop the flashing tail lamp on. Just for this purpose today. Otherwise, I would have just put the normal light lights on, but I like this feature, so we're going to use it. Right, back to the other end. Right, so, so that door closed. Let's pop our key in. There we go. Right, so we need some. Uh, we need tail lights. No, they are off, aren't they? Right, we want them on. I hope is right. No, it's not because we've still got a flashing tail lamp. Get that off. All right, in we get once again. Take two. All right, back in the hot seat. We want to put our reverser on, release that brake. Do you know what I'm going to say that I'm going to do now? Or it might just work, I hope. I hope my, uh, my brakes have actually fully released. Which I think they have. Hooray! Right, so before we actually go anywhere, I need to just sort them switches out so change points away we go RA driver so we're now going to go to Fornaby Traction Maintenance Depot line 12 I think I have left a brake on. I reckon my loco brake's still on. I've done this before many a times and I forgot to take it back off. I mean, I've, I've shut the normal brake down and I bet I've left that on. I have. That's why it's dragging. I'm gonna try again. Schoolboy error. Try again.
got 400 yards till uh, our end point there. So for £11.99, do I recommend the Class 20? Uh, yes, I do. Um, it sounds good, and again, it, it drives well. It feels f fantastic. Um, and it's nice to see another English electric loco in the game. <clears throat> Keep them coming, obviously, for Trains and World 2, though. Um, it's great stuff. Super fantastic stuff. Um, you can pick this up on Steam. £11.99 again. <clears throat> couple of cons, a couple of niggles as we've covered in this video but overall it's probably one of the DTG better releases in loco packs again. I said this in the stream, I always feel that the loco packs that come second after like the roots always seem to be better quality in in terms of things like what, loco wise. Obviously when they're doing the route the money side of things is probably going to be more invested in the route than the loco I think. So it's good to see. We are but arrived, so I'm not going to hit the doors. Excellent stuff. And we have done it. Have we got a gold medal? We have. I got a silver last time, so I've been better to myself. Absolutely fantastic. So if I just press continue, can I continue my free roam? Yes, I can. So I'm going to jump out of here. I'm just going to leave the loco. Take it off. Take that off, take the key out, and then we're going to isolate all this lot. Excellent, right, I'm going to leave the loco there. Get into the sun. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. I hope it's been beneficial to you. Um, if it is something that you want and um, it's something you're going to enjoy, then we do fully recommend that you do pick up this pack. We've been Tracing TV and I've been Tom. Again, any um, any comments and feedback, please do drop us a message. We'd love to hear back from you. Um, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, um, send us off, send us to your friends, let everyone know about us. Um, it's massively appreciated. Don't forget, you can catch our Twitch channel, um, which is in the link description below, which is Tracing TV um, underscore Tom. The link's going to be changing very soon, slightly, but it will uh, it'll just be a name change rather than the link, if I will. Um, but we'll uh, cover all that moving forward. Um, massive thanks once again, guys. We hope you've enjoyed, and we will see you in the next video. Take care and stay safe, guys.